All right, guys, thanks for stopping by Cask and Q, where whiskey and barbecue meet. I'm your host, Justin Lloyd, and today we're doing something a little bit different. We're gonna cook a whole hog. Let's go get it. All right, guys, we're here in front of a hog's meat market. Let's go inside and get our pig. What's in the box? What's in the box? Pig in a box, not a in a box. Unpacking this uh, hog cooking pit, the cinder blocks back there. It's not for the faint of heart. No, we got, sucks. The, yeah, that's the bearded chef guy. You need to go follow him on Instagram. I'll put a link to his uh, Instagram in the description box below. So we got pretty much everything loaded up and uh, we're gonna head out. We'll see y'all in a little bit. All right guys, we're at the, uh, the duck lodge where we're cooking for a group of people. Uh, just gonna show you how we set up the pit. All right, as you can see, that's three white on the end. We messed up at first, and then we're doing four, one, two, three, yeah, four wide on the sides, and one, two, three, four tall. So uh, we got rebar put in there, you can see that, and then uh, we'll just cover it with tin, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Oh, uh, you don't have to go the other way. All right, folks, uh, we are about to start trimming the hog. We're gonna do the injection right before it goes on the pit. So that'll be about four in the morning. Uh, so right now we're just gonna show you how to trim the hog, split the backbone, all that stuff. And there's the beard chef guy once again. Check him out, Instagram, link below in the description box. You gotta have a cold beer, Ben. Just using a regular old uh, Vitronics boning knife. This is a 72 pound hog we're cooking. So it'll take a little bit of work to get this prepped. Out. Yeah, we can take it out. You oink your last oink. Did you just tough talk a dead pig? So we'll take careful care when we go through with the sawzall. Some people use an ax to split the uh, backbone, but I find this to be a little bit easier. We'll start at the top and just try to keep a straight line. Uh, we want to make we want to make sure we don't puncture the skin on the other side. Just go down the go down the backbone and it's a lot easier than using a hatchet there's my neighbor tim there's ben again cut right down the uh, middle down the backbone right there and we're going to take all that silver skin out we'll go down there to the down there to the hams and come up back to the shoulders and remove that skin and uh, that'll be it for this this afternoon um, once we hit morning time and ready to throw this pig on then we'll uh, we'll dust it with some rub and inject it and we'll be ready to rock and roll Let's wash this thing off real quick, get rid of those bone fragments and any of that blood. We'll pick out some of the um, little organs and whatnot. Which side you want to go? That side? Doesn't matter. Oh. 
smell like pig now. Damn it. Yeah, it might be less messy. It's all in my socks and shit now. Here we're just gonna try to separate the skin from the ham, that way we can get rubbed down onto the, onto the meat. And we'll remove as much silver skin as we can without taking a whole lot of time doing it. Yeah, come towards me here. Reminds me of doing a deer. Yeah, that looks good, yeah. Remove this old membrane. Sometimes it likes to come off, sometimes it doesn't. And it's eating competition hog. We're doing a pig picking. So if you're looking for a competition hog video, this is not it. And just like with any regular ribs, buy from the store, it has a membrane. Usually I use a butter knife and paper towel to get under there and remove these. Seems to be working okay. Yeah, it is. Alright, that one came off pretty good. Obviously, ran some uh, water over that. I want to get these glands out too. You'll see little Glands like that, those are bitter and gross. Nobody wants that. If anything looks weird, get rid of it. Oh, one thing I forgot. Uh, some people do this, some people don't. But if you come, I do it on this side. The ribs right here. So this is the belly, right? That's the belly meat. So a lot of times in competition, they'll come right down through here, so they can lift the ribs up and get more seasoning under there. And those ribs can actually, they'll kind of flop. Actually, I think I'll go ahead and do it that way to show you. Um, it's hard to, yeah. Actually, I might be able to do it from this side. So your ribs are right there. Coming right down the side of the ribs. And again, being careful not to puncture the skin because this is kind of like a bowl, right? It's going to hold all your all your mop sauce and moisture and all that stuff. And you don't care about the ribs like having meat on them necessarily. Just kind of follow along that bone. Just like that. And that way you can get seasoning up under there. All right, the next thing we want to do is get these shoulders here. Same thing that we did on the hams. So you use the charcoal, you leave the corner like that? What's that? Yeah, that's going to be how we uh, get started. Then you put the wood on. Wood will go on top of the charcoal. Yep. And once that wood burns down, we'll, we'll have some... In the center, huh? No. But you, lay tin you can. Top. Now, that's a different style of cooking. You put tin over the top of it? Uh-huh. Nope. Yep. Nope. Just keep the four corners hot. And that brick at the bottom kind of radiates the heat, yeah. bounces it back up. And uh, we'll shovel coals from the fire pit. We'll get that wood thrown in there. Cool. Yeah. Right. Nothing to it. Yes, sir. For that size pig, yeah. What's the biggest one you ever uh, About 100 pounds. That's a long time to cook. I like these sizes the best. <laughs> His hooves on. Yeah, he didn't take them off. Much easier when you can see what you're doing. I don't know why I say cheese when people tell me say cheese. I just do. I just do what I'm told. Yeah. All right. So that's what we're looking like once we're done. Um, got those ribs laid open like that on each side, like we showed you. Got the uh, shoulders where we want them. Um, got all the gizzards and weird stuff out of the neck area. And uh, so we're just going to put this back in the ice, and uh, we'll see you in the morning. All right, guys, we're back. Um, it is about, what's it, 3.45 in the morning. 
and uh, we got a fire pit going back here. We're gonna burn some coals. I'll take you over to the pig pit and kind of get that going and show you what that looks like. May have had one too many whiskeys last night, but there's a lot of good stories. <laughs> If you remember from the first part of the video, we have coals in each corner of the fire pit and uh, of, the, of the hog pit. And like I mentioned, we have the, uh, the fire going over there in the fire pit, and that's where we're gonna burn down for coals. So uh, we'll just get this started. I say that, yeah, here we go. We're just gonna put one of these tumbleweeds in each pile, kind of get that going. And our hog's been sitting in the cooler all night on ice. So if you're doing this, be sure you have plenty of ice. Okay, so old bearded chef guy is uh, cutting some bisqueen here. Um, this is what we're going to put on the table to uh, transport the hog. It really just helps keep the table clean and uh, you just throw the bisqueen away. It makes it a lot easier. But as you can see, uh, coals are catching. Um, so, Mr. Ben, the beard chef guy's over there getting the table prepped and we'll get the hog on there in just a little bit. Got the hog on the table there as you can see. And last night I made up an injection. This is Meat Church's hog injection. I'll put the link to this product in the description box below. And uh, Mr. Beard chef guy over there is uh, getting the needles ready, prepped for surgery. I usually don't let him have needles or sharp objects, but in this case, man, it's early, isn't it? And we're just using one of those cheap uh, injectors you get from those packages whenever you buy like Tony Shastri's injection. And uh, this is the ham, of course. And we really want to concentrate on, on getting those blown up and uh, filled up with that injection. That injection has phosphates in it and some other stuff that's gonna help retain moisture in the hams. Um, I've, I've done it without the injection and with, and. You know, I usually don't like to use a whole lot of stuff on, on you know, gimmicky type things, but it's not really a gimmick. This actually works. It, it makes a difference in the tenderness and the juiciness of the hams, which those hams can dry out pretty quickly. So, and also to note, once we get this hog on the pit, we're gonna be monitoring the temperature of the, uh, of the pit over here and uh, the internal temperature of the meat. I'll have a probe in the, uh, in the hams. Um, we're looking for about 180 internal on the hams. Um, if you go too far in the hams, they get dried out. Um, and on the shoulders, we'll end up in the, you know, 195 range, maybe 200. And all this will be shredded up. It's a pig picking. So our next move is gonna be to get this guy seasoned up. Um, well, in here, so it says blue ribbon, but that's not what's in here. Um, this is just a shaker bottle, um, obviously. But uh, this is salt, pepper, onion, and garlic. So we went with 16 mesh, uh, ground black pepper, uh, diamond crystal kosher salt, um, some onion powder, and some garlic powder. Uh, just kind of do it to taste. The reason I, I don't throw any brown sugar in there or any, anything for sweet uh, is because it tends to burn because it's such a long cook. All right, bearded chef, gotta do it to it. You don't have to worry about the skin. Nobody's gonna eat that anyway. Uh, this is the style of hog where everything, uh, the whole hog will cook skin down the whole time. Now, if this is a racing style where it's kind of up on all fours, then uh, you worry more about the skin when you're doing it that way. Looks good to me. All right, I'm gonna hit this uh, rebar with some, uh, just some cooking spray. I just spray this stuff on the rebar to make sure the skin doesn't stick when we pull the hog off. We're gonna use some chicken wire. Uh, we're gonna put that on top of the rebar um, and that chicken wire will allow us to transport the hog easier. Instead of grabbing legs, we just grab chicken wire and throw it back up on the table when it's done.
Got the beer can in there in case he gets thirsty. Let's grab our roofing tin. And we'll worry about the probes later. All right. We got our roofing tin on top and we're just gonna let her go. Good job, Beard Chef guy. We did it. We did it. That owl's yakking up a storm out there. All right, we got the Bearded Chef guy to getting our mop sauce together. It's an uh, old family recipe. Old family recipe that's been passed down many generations. Just kidding. What we got here? Got some uh, Italian dressing, soy sauce, uh, washer sister sauce, <laughs> and probably some other secret ingredients we'll put in there. Yep. The mop is really just to uh, keep moisture in the uh, on the hog, and uh, it really comes in handy. Uh, when you start eating, you can pick pieces of uh, meat off and dip it in that mop sauce That's because it, it'll kind of hang out in that cavity, you know, on top of the, the ribs. And then, man, it just adds an extra dimension of flavor. We're just uh, dumping all the ingredients there into the uh, into this five-gallon bucket, a new one. And we got a mop over there sitting off to the side that we'll uh, apply this mop sauce with. And um, like I said, I'll, I'll put the ingredients in the description box below. All right, so uh, this has been on about an hour and a half. So we're just gonna take this tin off and we're getting a little bit of color there. And uh, our coals are looking pretty good. Um, I am gonna go ahead and put a thermometer in, a probe. Ben is over there, he's coming over here to shovel some coals. And I'm gonna put this probe right there in the ham. And the other probe is gonna go just on the side over here so I can ha have a good idea of the temperature in the middle of the pit. Just stick that guy right there. As you can see there, Ben's shoveling coals from that fire pit and we're just placing them right down there in the corners. Just replacing the coals that have kind of burned down. We'll hit each corner. And just an hour and a half in, you can see some good color um, so we'll probably go ahead and uh, foil the legs while we're doing this and put foil around the head. And all that's really going to do is just preserve the color the best we can, just so it doesn't have a burnt look. Putting the bearded chef got to work. <laughs> hey, somebody's got to film, somebody's got to work. Sun's starting to come up here at the uh, Pecan Lake Duck Lodge. It's beautiful back there behind the lodge. Now you can see a little bit of the sunrise over there in the corner. About four cups of coffee in, so I'm feeling much better than I was this morning. There we go. Just gonna replenish some of that wood over there. That's another thing is keep that fire going. Um, if you have a, you know, like a 55 gallon uh, drum, steel drum, then that could be something that you use, you know, just cut a hole in the bottom of it. Or if you have a fire pit to use, that's another good method. Now, some people will use charcoal chimneys and, and rotate those if you have, you know, like three or four of them. So anyway, uh, there's our mop Lowe's special. <laughs> there we go. He's an old pro. Look at him go, folks. He knows exactly what he's doing. It's like just like he's doing. You don't want to, you know, rub the the mop across the. Yeah, yeah. You rub the rub off exactly. So, just kind of dab it. Yeah, yeah. Good color. There we go. And uh, we're gonna hit the head and the uh, the legs with some aluminum foil. And uh, well, I'll, I'll do that off camera. You know how to use foil. Just make sure, uh, make sure you use the heavy duty aluminum foil and it doesn't hurt to double it up. So we're gonna do that off camera and uh, get the, uh, the tin back on here and let her cook some more. We are about three hours in. We'll just hit it with a little more mop. And uh, Ben's shoveling in some more coals. Looking good. All right, we just hit it with some more mop sauce. And uh, Mr. Ben over here, bearded chef guy, is taking care of the coals. About seven hours in, we've been uh, adding coal and mopping periodically throughout the cook. Looking pretty 
good. So uh, we're gonna hit it with some more mop and uh, get some splits down in there to push this cook along faster. Just shoveling more coals. That's what we do. All right, cover her back up. We have had to battle wind today, so that's been a bit of an issue, but everything's cooking just as it should. Are y'all hungry? Yeah, all right. Well, we got a whole hog right here. Good color. That belly's gonna be delicious. We are at 195 and 200 in each shoulder. We're at 177 and 178 in the hams. We are done. Uh, let's see, what time is it? It's 3.53, so we're just shy of 12 hours exactly. Bearded Chef guy is going to get the old uh, traditional red and white tablecloth down. I'll let you fight with it while I just stand here. Hey, you got a volunteer. There we go. Great color. Juicy. And it's going to be tender. Uh, so anyway, we're going to pull this off and uh, I'll show you that part. Really, it's just grabbing the, uh, the chicken wire and moving, on, moving it on over to that table. And uh, we're going to let it rest for maybe 30 minutes and uh, then we're going to shred it. And we'll show you that part here in a little bit. We got some onlookers, some young fellers ready to eat and drink some beer crowd today all right so we're done and uh, this is what we're looking like we've already shredded a lot of it turned out excellent don't have great lighting out here today but you get the idea of course we got to go with the apple in the mouth and this is set up for proper pig picking people are just gonna come by and get what they want we got a good crowd out here today so we, uh, at the end of it all, we filmed, or we filmed, at the end of it all, it took about uh, 12, 13 hours. Um, so uh, that's it. That's all there is to it. If you have any questions, leave them in the uh, comments below. We'll see you next time.